Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today I'd like to share with you a Magnum tuning fuel controller, which uh, this one's designed for the NMAX, obviously they do them for many different bikes. Uh, I'm going to be installing this on my Yamaha NMAX 125. This is not really an instructional video, but if you're really lost and you don't know uh, where to turn and you fancy doing the work yourself, this video may be of help to you, okay? Hope you enjoy the video. So first of all, I'd like to share with you what came in the package when I bought this. Obviously, I ordered this online. I paid, I think it was about 200 US dollars for it, just over 200 US, US dollars. And this is what came in the package. Everything else doesn't really matter. Obviously, it came with this cable as well. I also want to share with you that it came with this little chrome limited edition emblem sticker thing, which is pretty cool. Uh, slight flexi plastic which is really nice um, they didn't have to do that but they included that for free so thank you very much I'm very happy about that uh, also it came with one of these uh, bottle openers you know what I've been uh, after a bottle opener for quite some time uh, and this one just came as a gift so I'm pretty happy about that it's got a little flashlight on the bottom and a little tape measure which is pretty cool um, yeah thank you very much for the gifts this is the actual unit that you install onto your bike your motorbike uh, this one was for the Yamaha NMAX 125 and obviously having an NMAX that's the one I went for so this is what's installed onto your system after you install it I'll go through the wires with you it's uh, really really nice it's potted as you can see the unit itself should stand up to some abuse okay obviously you're gonna be on a motorbike traveling and uh, turning about so it's gonna be lots of vibration lots of knocks now these are the wires See, it comes with a red and black so the red is the live it will go to uh, an ignition live so whenever you turn the key it will come on and then power this this is the negative so it's an earth cable you're gonna have to earth that somewhere i believe the blue cable z goes to the o2 sensors i'll go through that with you on my bike in a minute i'm not a pro at this remember i'm just uh, this is like probably the first engine i've properly worked on and uh, I'm, I'm learning a lot as i go along okay so hopefully this is going to help someone out there these two go to o2 sensors and these two purple wires go to the IAT uh, sensor cable or wire. What you do is with the IAT cable, the uh, air intake temperature sensor cable uh, wire, you cut it in half, okay? Well, you don't have to cut it exactly in half, but you cut it. And then, um, so then you get two ends and you connect one of these purple wires to one end and then you connect the other purple wire to the other end, if that makes sense. And this is the controller. Now you're wondering why this is separate. Okay, uh, this is how it works. This is fully mounted to the bike. So this is going to be uh, installed and mounted solid solidly on my NMAX somewhere. That won't move ever. It will be where I uh, leave it. But this will be uh, disengaged whenever I take it off. Now, this is how it attaches to it. You use this cable to attach it to that and this side of the cable to attach to this, to this controller. Obviously, you turn it on. This is probably the power switch. Uh, we'll get into that later. And then if this is fully off, which is uh, fully anti-clockwise, uh, counterclockwise, then this is uh, fully off. Okay, so that's factory settings. Once this is all plugged in, turned on, and you give it live, you can then adjust the fueling like this. Okay, you go in with small increments, and then you test, 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 and then, uh, you know, if it's not enough fuel, you uh, up it a bit more, and then test, 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 until you get the correct air fuel ratio. The good thing about this is it's pretty cheap. It's not crazy expensive. I was expecting, my budget was about 200 US dollars, and this fell in that category. I think it was about 206 US dollars not including shipping how it's built okay I'll give you a good look at that because I didn't really have much information on this when I was looking for fuel controllers you know uh, this was literally the first thing that came up and nothing else uh, was was available to me anyway I'm not sure if there are obviously if there are you can tell me and then uh, it might help all the other viewers out there I really dig the way this is made it kind of looks like it's retro like kind of built in your backyard kind of thing obviously it's not like a crazy potted controller you see this uh, this part here this little bolt here I wondered what that was that's literally to stop you from unscrewing this too much so that it comes out I believe it can come off uh, that's just to hold that on there I really dig that look you know it's really cool to me uh, some of you might not like it but uh, if you don't you don't have to get this con fuel controller and these are obviously the other just uh, the crimps and, and plugs and stuff to help you connect your cables so that you don't have to keep uh, cutting and um, you know doing all the work yourself with a soldering iron and stuff these are the 
splicers, I believe they're called. I don't know what they're called. Uh, sorry if I've got that name wrong, but they kind of splice into the wire so that you don't have to, um, you know, twist them together and things like that. This is quite a clean, uh, clean installation. Right, okay, let's, uh, let's get to it. So we're now going to locate the intake air temperature sensor or what the wire that goes to it which is on a harness, a little plug. So if you look on the right hand side of your NMAX and come down this side, it's obviously you have to have the bike stripped down to this point which is easy to, easy to do. Uh, if you don't, there are some videos online uh, showing how people uh, disassemble and take apart their NMAX right. So we're going to have a look at the IAT sensor wire. Now if you look here, I'm just going to focus on this point because it's quite hard to locate for those of you that don't know where it is. So I've come from this point and I'm going to go straight forward. And if you look in the center of the screen there where I'm going to focus, that harness right at the back there, see that there? That's the cable you want to get to, yeah? That one there. It's very, very difficult to bring out, yeah, that one there. There's a, a retaining uh, clipper on the bottom of it, so it's literally just a spring action retra uh, retainer. What you do is you just uh, push down uh, until the retaining clip uh, comes out from the bottom, and then it just pulls out like a normal harness, so do that now. Right, what I'm doing is that my hand is coming in from the back of the bike. I'm coming in from the rear and my, my hand is literally on this harness here and I'm going to push up on this and try and use my other hand now to, <laughs> to push it forward, okay? I've got three hands. Okay, as you can see, mine's already been popped off just now, I did that. Uh, the easiest way to pop this off is to uh, come from the rear of the bike and uh, wedge your hand inside from underneath the bike, from behind, uh, reach forward and then um, put your strongest finger underneath this where the uh, the clipper is, there's a, there's a retaining clip and just push up as hard as you can and once you hear it click it means it's popped out, once it's popped uh, it literally can be just pushed out, so mine's been popped out so I can push it out now once you've unclipped the harness from the retaining point, if you have a look on this side you can see this is what the uh, the harness looks like now it's got five wires as you can see I'm gonna try and focus in on that and as you can see the first wire on the left there is black and blue that one's the earth point uh, yellow and blue were I, I can't remember which one was which but one of them I, I think it might be the yellow one that controls the throttle position uh, it's not control the throttle position but it is a throttle position sensor let's say you have your throttle half open it will send the data back using the uh, blue cable next to it back to the ECU telling that your throttle is half open to calculate how much fuel or how much gas it's gonna inject I believe I believe that's how it works okay and then there's the pink and white one which is some kind of um, I can't remember what it was something to do with pressure or something a pressure sensor or something to to make sure there's no leaks I'm not too sure not always at this but uh, I know very basics okay now you see the cable on the far right there which is the uh, to me it looks brown and white uh, might be purple, it looks brown and white. The brown and white cable, that's the one you need. That's the IAT sensor cable, okay? I've just cut the protective sleeve back so that I have access to the cables. I cannot stress this enough, be very careful that you do not cut your cables or wires when you are removing or partially removing this sleeve, okay? It will be so, so tragic if you did that. Okay, once you've partially removed the sleeve, you then have access to these wires. First thing you're going to want to do is locate a place where you want to install your unit. Okay, this will be the permanent mounting point for this. Uh, I will install mine inside the, the boot here. So it's going to be there. Now I'm just measuring up the wires. The wires going to come up through here, down here, and through uh, a little hole here where the other wire is coming through. You can see that wire there. So I'm just going to uh, thread it through. But I'm going to put a piece of protective... Um, sheathing on it okay this is an extra large shrink wrap in see-through this is what I'm going to thread my wires through just to protect it while it goes through that hole uh, once you've got all your wires aligned and protected the way you want them to I've got you see I've got this really overkill uh, wire protectors and shrink wrap over mine just to protect it I want to make sure this stays safe in the weathering and cold and the heat outside and against any abrasion okay so if it's going to be rubbing against anything it's going to be protected so we've got the uh, the purple cables here now these two goes to the intake air temperature sensor okay so that's the this this wire here on this harness remember I said that uh, then this blue wire which goes to the exhaust uh, exhaust O2 sensor okay well the O2 sensor on the outlet so that's this cable here and then I've got my uh, plus and minus or positive and negative which goes to the uh, ignition and an earth point in the front there okay once I've done that I'm now going to cut this, sorry, let's have a look. 
Right, so uh, as we located this wire earlier, as I said, the brown and white cable there, right on the end, I'm going to cut that at some point and then uh, attach these bullet connectors. Okay, so I'm just going to crimp these bullet connectors on and then attach, attach the other side of the bullet connectors on these purple ones and then connect them up. Finally, after a lot of swearing and working in a tight space, I managed to wire in the uh, the purple wires to the IAT sensor, okay? And once you've installed the IAT sensor cables, you just uh, reinstall the harness back into the plug there. And next thing you're going to want to do is move on to the blue wire. This is the O2 sensor. Yes, you only need one of them. I know the, uh, the unit comes with two. But on the NMAX, if you're installing it on the NMAX, you only need one. So this installs onto uh, that wire there, if you don't already know. Yes, if you look right at the bottom of your engine there, you could see that plug there. Uh, can you see it? Let me just try and get a better view here. Sorry, it's after dark now and I'm still working on it. On my only day off, right? That plug there with the little white speck on it, that's the, the cable you want. So you want to cut into that and then uh, sort of splice this white cable into it, the white wire, uh, blue, sorry, splice this blue wire into it. And here you can see that I have used the splicer that they have provided and spliced the blue wire into the uh, O2 sensor wire. Uh, you can't really see the blue wire anymore because what I've done is I've cut a little hole in the top there of the protective sleeving and I've threaded it through, threaded the blue wire through, coming down with the original wire inside the sleeve. And once it gets to the bottom there, uh, it's spliced in. And it's a new day and I've just completed the install, done all the testing and recalibrated everything so I can actually show you how I've mounted it. There's been a slight change of plan. What I've decided to do now is mount the mounting bracket on the inside of the bike but um, on the outside of the glove box as opposed to I was going to have that and a control box inside but I've now decided to mount this to the frame on this side. But it's okay when all the fairings off this is going to be this is going to be covered and hopefully a little bit rainproof so it won't be uh, won't be too um, open to the elements. Now what I've done is there's a bolt here on the frame as you can see. If you're wondering where this is that's where it is on the frame. I'll just zoom in here and as you can see there's that bolt there that's a perfect fit for the uh, the mounting bracket what I had to do though was bend this arm of the mounting bracket so it was there like that and I had to bend it like that so it angles that way now otherwise it would have been upright that was to allow it to have more space to miss this piece of plastic here to go in the rear there and it actually fits it's not touching against anything there's there's plenty of room now so don't worry about that uh, the wire now runs under here and it comes through there, up the original hole. I didn't drill any hole in this side. There's, a, there's actually enough space there for the wire to go through with the uh, original loom. Comes under here on the side of the battery, underneath the battery cover, and comes out the rear. And in this part, I did have to drill a hole. It's gonna be quite dark, I'll show you from the other side. And here you can see, this is exactly how I've mounted it. I've drilled a hole in there, and that allows the wire to come through here. Got plenty of slack so I can put it wherever or curl it and um, kind of tidy it up later. But what I've done is, um, you see the box here? It's got a Perspex box or plastic box. Normally when I open the boot, I normally throw all my stuff in there. When I'm collecting stuff or delivering something or picking a package up for someone, I normally throw it all in here and it all gets just slammed aside. And if I didn't have any kind of protective box over this, this would probably mess with all the settings and everything and probably um, do harm to the cable and everything. So what I've done is just found a plastic box that fits and dremeled out this shape that allows the cable to go through so it's still kind of protected I mean obviously I can tape all this down and reinforce it somehow probably the only issue uh, I'm gonna say about with this box is the controllers not really protected in any way it's got no guard or mount or anything on, on it that um, helps it do its job or keeps it protected from the elements so um, you kind of have to do something find it mount it somewhere safe but obviously I'm gonna put it inside the boot where I keep stuff, so it needs a, a protective sheath over it, so that's what I've done with mine. It's probably gonna be mounted up here out of the way so I can actually keep stuff in my boot without taking up too much space. I've also taken the bike out. Uh, I've had loads of fun with it. It's really easy to adjust. You just, when you want more fuel, you just turn it a bit, and then you want less fuel, you just turn it down a bit, until you find the perfect setting for um, what the, the needs um, you have and what kind of engine you have. I haven't told you guys yet, but I've put a 180cc uh, cylinder and piston, so it's like a big bore uh, kit in, on this bike, and it's, it needed a fuel controller. Once it jumps to the map, 
if, if you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. If you don't, just ignore this bit. When it jumps to the map, uh, there was a massive lag and I would lurch forward as it stopped feeding fuel. And then when the map kicked in, then it would fly forward and then give me loads of power. And just to get rid of that, uh, smooth out the curve and give me fuel uh, in that transition, I needed this fuel controller. Okay, so uh, that's basically it, the end of this video. Uh, I really hope it helps someone out there because when I was about to buy this fuel controller, I had no information whatsoever and there was not really any help on uh, any forums or anything or no one really talked about what to do. So I was really lacking in, from, in information. So once I've installed it, which is now, I thought, you know, I'd make a video and show everyone how I did it, give some insight to what went on and pros and cons maybe, and then um, show you the design of it. So hopefully it helps someone out there. And uh, thank you very much for watching. If you're thinking about a fuel controller, this video will help you decide on whether to get this one or not. So uh, thank you very much for watching again. And uh, this is Astro signing off.